If you do enjoy this episode, please do take a minute to go over to our YouTube channel, Be Here Now with Jay France, podcasts and documentaries. And please do hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be updated with all the latest interviews and content on the page. I hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for watching. Once that drums came home and set it up, not only did I not disturb him, I was like, go i was like missing he would like stop the sessions and be like where's steven and he would just find me sleeping like next to the drums yeah <laughs> <laughs> like probably having fed me all day i'm just there drumming <laughs> i'm just there like conked out on the floor like i see the earth i see like this life as just like we're moving in so just make the most of it so i think that's what keeps me going just the fact that anything is possible yeah um and the fact that i've experienced impossible things it just lets me know that, okay, like I've been in rooms with like celebrities or people that I used to see on TV and I'm just like, wait, now I'm here. So it's just like, okay, let's just take it up another level then. Right, hello and welcome to another episode of Be Here Now with Jay France. Uh, we've got a great guest on today. Um, he's a professional drummer that's played with the likes of Rihanna, Stormzy, Rita Ora, Connor Maynard, uh, you name it, uh, plenty more as well. Um, and uh, it goes by the name of Stephen G. Legend and it's a privilege to have him on the show today. Uh, so let's say hello to him. Hello, Stephen. Hey, how you doing, Jay? You good? <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, good. Thank you. And uh, like I said, it's a, um, a, a pleasure to have you on the show today, man. And uh, what I like to do is just start um, from if you can take me back from your early childhood and where you grew yeah. up and what things were were like, really. Um, wow. Early childhood. So I was actually um, born in Paris. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's, it's where my childhood is like split into two kind of when I was in, in, in France and when I came here. But um, what really kicked it off in my childhood was my dad. So he, he's a musician, um, you know, plays every instrument, drums, guitar, bass, produces music as well. So he was like my first like inspiration, like growing up or my first sort of um, intro to music. So in the house, in, in our like tiny little, apartment in Paris he, he, the living room was basically a studio so there was always music there was all these artists coming in and he would produce and record music so that's how that's basically what all I knew um kind of thing and then when we moved to London I was about six or seven um yeah it just kind of continued um started playing drums in different churches um and just yeah <laughs> that's kind of how my childhood was kind of set up yeah. um and that's kind of what formed like my musical abilities like today you've got music people around you the influence that has at you on a young age can be a really positive thing you yeah know? so you it sounds like you had a lot of musicians coming and going um and uh you was you was at that time you was only uh you said you was only like really young when you started then yeah yeah, yeah. So I actually um, picked up drums at like three, three, four years old. Basically, so <laughs> what, what, what will happen is my dad was like always at home, just like making music, recording music, right? And I think when I was really young, I think like my mom would be off like working or I don't know, doing a thing. I was always coming and disturbing him, right? I was a little toddler, right? <laughs> so to get me off his back, he got, he bought me a, a drum set, right? Yeah. To get me off his back kind of thing. And then that, I just never looked back. Once that drums came home and set it up, not only did I not disturb him, I was like, go, I was like missing. He would like stop the sessions and be like, where's Steven? And he would just find me sleeping like next to the drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like probably having fed me all day. I'm just there drumming. I'm just there like conked out on the floor. Um, so that's how like that's how it happened and then yeah just the, the inspiration and just the different musical style of musicians that I met um, subconsciously though I didn't really understand I didn't know it was going to be 
that's going to have an effect on my life. I just thought this is normal. Like this is, yeah, I, I just found it normal. Yeah. And what training did you get from? So when, when you was younger, then you, can you take me through when you come to uh, London then and what age you was and what you remember from that time of moving from Paris to, to London, right? Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I moved here, started school and it, it, I kind of lived like a, a, a little double life, I'll be honest. Like in school, I was a, I was a sports guy. Like I was doing football, do you know what I'm saying? Like I really got into football and stuff. And it's only so in school, they didn't know me. Nobody knew me as a musician, right? Only at home, I would, I've had a drum set or um, I would just be in my music world. So that's kind of, so yeah, it was, it, it was weird. So up to secondary school, I was still doing sports. And then I went into a bit of a crossroad, like at college at 16, I made a decision, either I'm gonna to go to a music college or I'm gonna stay in my secondary school sixth form where I go a bit more, you know, in a, a uh, you know, kind of like sports science stuff. And I just chose music, it's, it's weird, it's, you know, like I signed up to two colleges, my secondary school college and my, and this college, and they started on the same day, right? So I got accepted to both. So on the day that I woke up, basically, I had to, I made a decision, either I'm gonna go to sixth form or go to a musical college. And then I went to a musical college and then that's where it, I really basically, I think that was the day that I chose the path of music for real. Um, oh, yeah. But in saying that, you already know how his music really chose me. So it was, it was always going to happen. <laughs> Really, yeah. So. yeah yeah definitely I can and um, it's in interesting you say that you kept the two kind of separate because um, I suppose I was uh, the opposite to that of where uh, well, well opposite I'd say in some respects where um, when I was at school it was like in secondary school it was music is the, I, I've started to be realize it's the only thing that I uh, like doing if you know what I mean so yeah and it was my chart it was my thing to it was my thing that I had at school and it was like oh there's there's Jay he's the dr he's the drummer one and it was like a skill that he gained respect from and stuff you know because not a lot of people really did that as well you know it's quite rare yeah. that, um um especially in and what was like school education like for you as well in in music as well did you uh, how how did you get on with that well, I, I, I attempted musical, uh, music GCSEs. Um, I think I did all right. I got, a, I think I got a B. Like it's, yeah. you know, in my school life was, I, I used to, I used to rap. I used to like MC, I used to do grime, right? So I was a, kind of like a grime MC. So musically I was the most, I was known for was, oh, that's that grime guy or the, you know, he's a sports guy and he does grime, right? He raps kind of thing. but. I think on the last year, year 11, is when I actually did a drum performance at school, right? Yeah. And, but it was still hidden because my year wasn't there. We were doing GCSE, so it was off. So it was, the rest of the school saw me except for my year. So it's yeah. only at the last minute where they were like, oh, we didn't know he plays drums. So yeah, music education was good. I did well at school, actually. I did very well. Um, got like 10 G 10 and a half GCSEs like um yeah like yeah. Just, and what what area was this as well uh Stephen was this um, um did you, East London was it yeah East London Barking so it's like East London slash Essex like Barking yeah That's okay cool excellent and uh right so um would you say you had any any hurdles uh, like you, you uh, overcome to make like you said one one was there to make a decision of what road that you're going to go down as well was there any yeah. other hurdles you had to kind of overcome uh, in early childhood and stuff like that i think my hurdles it depends i think i've had so many hurdles it's just it's kind of like in what sense like in music it was like when i made a decision to go down a music path i just didn't have any connections i didn't really know anyone but so my hurdle was just kind of like, I got obsessed at the point actually, like mm. I, I want to make it, right? I want to tour yeah. around the world, like, you know, and I just didn't know where to start. Like, you know, so I would just travel to every jam in London, go everywhere, do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Um, yeah, that real determination, definitely sounds like. Yeah, it's, 
yeah, but I, and I always felt like, oh man, like maybe, you know, like I'm not like good enough. I went to these jams and these jam nights and I saw the level of musicianship and I was just like, wow, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. So it just pushed me to kind of just like, you know, um, yeah, go for it. Like I'll, I was like 17, right? Um, yeah. So I was like, going to these jams, getting home at like three, four in the morning. Like I'm not even 18 yet. My parents are just like worried. Well, my mom's just like, where have you been? And I'm just like, yeah, I saw this guy, this drummer play and there was this band and there was all that. <laughs> you know? yeah. so yeah I was just like going nuts like just really studying the game but I think there's one thing I did do I really studied the game without even knowing that studying the game I was I was just watching I was a big observer I was watching everyone I was seeing what gear everyone's using I was like doing my research on everyone and everything like I was like really obsessed to like you know have a shot kind of thing um, yeah, and so, yeah, I, like, I think I treat yeah. I think I treated music like sports. That's I can That was my mentality. I was like, if if it was football or basketball, I'll be practicing or so I'll be doing this. I'll be researching. So I did the same thing with music. Took on that kind of boxers uh, mentality as well. Yeah, uh, with things. So so when when did you kind of you took, you just spoke about um, your hurdles was kind of like trying to break into the industry, which is um, as we know, it's uh, like like a lot of kind of creative industries, just very very hard competitive industry to yeah. to try to try to get into and stuff. And um, how did how did what was that moment then? What was the first kind of big break that you you got for playing with the people that you played with? Um, just to touch on that, um, just so to educate a lot of people that oh, that might come across this, and I think how do you break into the industry? So, okay, my first big show, my first big thing was second year college. I'm 18 years old and an agency calls me up and they, they ask me, would you like to play for Rihanna? She's doing the Brit Awards. We would, we set, we would like, you've been chosen, you've been selected, right? Yeah. Now that was crazy. Like, that was crazy. All right, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. How did that come about? I really think there isn't one way to break in. I actually don't believe in that. I feel like if you keep doing what you're doing and you believe in yourself some way or the other, like the universe, God, whatever, will make it happen. Like I'm telling you, it's just how it works. If you think of like, if you think there's a way or you got, I don't know, email a lot of people, <laughs> it, nah, it doesn't work like that. I, I was practicing, so every Monday, because my college was had a rehe well, had rehearsal rooms, right? But every Monday they were open later than others. They were every Monday, you know, college closes at ten. Um, all the other days they close earlier at ten, so external people can use the rooms to practice. So I was practicing in one room, one of the rooms. Then there was a band that used my college for to rehearse. And then there was this guy, I don't know if he was an A&R or what, I don't know what he was. He came in, he must have heard me practicing in one of the rooms. He, he opened a door as I'm practicing. And then he just stood there and I'm practicing. I just look at him and I'm just, I'm just like, whoa, like, can I? <laughs> and he's just like, oh man, you're really good. Da, 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 da. Take my number. Da, 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 da. Um, I like your style. Uh, I'm going to be in touch. Right, this is such a typical like movie like story. Yeah, but that's what happened. I kid you not. He he took my number. Next thing you know, the week or two weeks later, I get a call saying we got we received your number from so and so. Where where you know we're working on a client, Rihanna, uh, doing the Brits. Send us a headshot. Send us your email. That's how that's how that basically started. Like that's how I got that basically or that show in particular fantastic um, such a young age as well to to have a, that that big gig and uh, on your cv is fantastic uh, playing with rihanna um it's obviously uh, a massive name in the industry um what was that experience like yeah it i mean it was a, a surreal experience you know um it was you know it was yeah it was such great experience um 
I had never done anything quite like that. You know, everything was new. We had to like costumes. So we were part of the show. We were like, there was various drummers that came on for her medley. And we were kind of like, you know, playing along kind of thing. So it wasn't like a live gig situation um, thing. It was kind of like chosen to perform in a, in a, in a yeah. performance kind of thing. And yeah, like, we were rehearsed at Excel Arena, and then we had the production rehearsals at the O2, and then obviously the show. It was it was crazy. Like at 18 years old, like I didn't even know how how to react. It was definitely like a life changing and experience. So uh, yeah, it's yeah, crazy, yeah, man. fantastic. Yeah, and like you said, these things um build up the, the the cv of people that you're playing with and that as well and i think you said something um important earlier as well when you said that you know it's these things will fall into place with the discipline that you have like because mm. it's not like a job where you apply for and you're you, you know you see uh, you go down a job center and it says drummer wanted for yeah, you know drummer wanted yeah. for michael jackson or whatever <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh it's kind of um yeah it's it's what you you make of it and and i suppose that comes back to your uh self-discipline and uh practice routine as well so uh, when you're not doing the gigs like like stuff we're experiencing now so um what is your 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 take on uh, your practice routine um that, that you that you do um yeah like things are different now i don't practice as much but obviously to obviously we're going to talk on what i've done yeah later on but to get to that it did take me a huge level of practice so i was i think in between 2009 to 2012 i think those those three years three four years um is where I put in the hours, like where I really put in the hours. I was practicing like mad. I was shedding. Um, I don't know if you're fam familiar with that term, like drum sheds, where you get together our drummers and you just practice. Oh yeah, actually, there's a, um, a uh, doing my research on you and stuff as well. There's a uh, a documentary on uh, Stephen's YouTube channel, uh, which I which I watched, and you talk about that in that documentary, and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I thought it was a great sense of like, uh, obviously a good, good sense of like drumming community and that as well when it was gear. Can you talk a little bit, you were just talking a bit about that as well. Yeah, so I, I, I remember one time, um, shout out to these great drummers. I, 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 I invited a drummer called Dexter Hercules, a drummer called Kaz Rodriguez, Samson, Joel Clark, all big drummers right now um, in the game. Ginger yeah. Hamilton, these guys have like played for like, Collectively, Oli Mers, Jesse J, ah, we, like I, I can go on yeah. and on and on. And I invited them to uh, my church where I had like a room where I used to practice. And I made it a thing to get all the best drummers that I could get my hands on and literally learn from them, right? So for like three years straight, and my boy Isaac, Joel Clark, um, great drummers as well. Um, we used to just practice every day, like we, it was a lifestyle. So I'm not even gonna call it discipline or motivation because we loved it. So I, it, it, we loved it. So I didn't see it. It's only coming back. I was like, oh yeah, I put the hours in because I was drumming every day because I really loved it. So we would spend like, sometimes we'll get into the studio like rehearsal room at like, I don't know, 6 p.m. And there's one time we had a shed, we, we we left up. I kid you not, at like 9 a.m. Oh wow. Yeah. Like we were going at it all night and we will do this week after week after week. Like mostly on the weekends or a day and a weekday. So yeah, like we put that work in and then it just made me ready to now that along with doing different gigs and um being in the church scene and stuff, that led to my next big break. Um yeah, which was yeah, the yeah, yeah. That so what was that uh, break then after? So we, um, you did the Rihanna stuff very, very uh, yeah. early on um, in your career, yeah. which like we spoke about is, you know, to put stuff to, to say that you've worked with Rihanna as well is fantastic. So what was your first kind of big break in, in terms of, you know, like proper session work or playing with like a, a, a bigger artist? 
So my big my big break was I did so I in so Rihanna was 2011. Then in 2012, I covered a few gigs for amazing drummer called Dexter Hercules on Rita Ora. So I did a few gigs of Rita Ora. Um, and then 2013, so bearing in mind, one big thing, 2011, another couple things, 2012. So we're getting closer, getting yeah. closer. <laughs> and in 2013, the big break comes. Um, I get called to work with Conor Maynard. And yeah, I worked with him basically for like a year and a half. Um, and we did European tours. We did like a stadium tour supporting, no, stadium, um, arena tour supporting Will I Am. Travel all around the world, TV shows, X Factor. Uh, wow, excellent. BBC. That's, yeah, that's, like, that's it was great. crazy. It was crazy. So that was like the next big break kind of thing. And is there a particular gig that stands out for you in that in that time as well? Uh, wow, I think. There's so many, it's hard to call, but I think it's the experience that stands out for me more in terms of the lifestyle. Like I was just a kid from Barking, you know, that had a dream. And then next thing you know, I'm traveling around the world. I'm on planes, like literally every, every other week, tour buses, hotels, all of that. I think what, what more stands out is the lifestyle change, right? Which you're not prepared for. Like it's, yeah. it's different. It's really huge. You're, you're used to doing the same thing, routine, practicing in my room, thinking it's all a dream, and then it comes true. Yes. It's like, oh, it, it was crazy. So, you know, we did so many shows, like so many great shows, like t being on TV, the first time being on TV, having, I don't know, makeup artist for, do you know what I'm saying? Just the little things. Oh, definitely, like yeah. And also as well, would you say there's, um, uh, like you see this a lot in boxing because uh, boxing is uh, predominantly like a lot of boxers are kind of working working class um, areas and stuff. You know, you, you don't yeah. really get a lot of kind of uh, rich boxers starting out that yeah, kind yeah. of already kind of like coming from a place of privilege. So and yeah. also that you see this one from people with that just suddenly just win the lottery and, and they've had nothing and then they've just got to adapt to a certain uh, way of life. So what you yeah. were saying there reminded me of uh, of that as well. Of, you know, you, you're, um, you're, you're, you're living with this one thing and it's a dream and it's a dream and it's you're struggling, you're doing it. Sometimes the journey as well is can be just as exciting as actually when you're actually doing the yeah do, doing the gig as well right yeah no fully and i just want to say like before all of this gig stuff like i remember going i i had like no money to get to places but i'll always go like sometimes i'll have to bump trains to get into these jam nights or i'll get home and then i'll get to barking and then i haven't got enough money on my oyster to get home so i'll walk from like barking station to my house or like yeah. it was like but it didn't even feel like struggle it felt I was just excited like I had just seen or I've managed to snuck into Ronnie Scott's oh, right wow yeah I've managed to snuck I'm like barely 18 or seven like I've managed to snuck into Ronnie Scott's to see a certain band right I've like twisted my way through the bodyguards like you know they ask for ID of kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like 3 a.m. You know, you know how Ronnie Scott's goes. And then, but I'm young, but, and I'm taking a bus, night bus, free night buses home. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I've, I'm thrilled and I'm sleeping on a bus. Like I've missed my, the amount of times I've slept on a bus and missed my stop many times. Like, yeah. like crazy. And then later on, I'm like, you know, on flights and like got my whole own hotel and it's just like, what? Like, it, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was crazy. Yeah, it was yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's true. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit of some other people that you've played with as well and just, uh, yeah. just say a few people and just if you could just kind of remember what the experience was like. So yeah. um, let's say, we already spoke about uh, a little bit, um, Rihanna um, Stormzy as well is, is on that. Yeah. As well. So the next artist after Conor Maynard was an artist called Quabs that I played for, for like two years. Amazing. Like I want to give this guy the props. Amazing. Probably one of the best artists that I've worked with. Um, honestly, like the experience with Quabs was amazing. 
Um, so we ended up doing a BBC Live Lounge and there was a feature where Stormzy um, came, you know, rehearsed with us and then we filmed. And it was like, you know, as we covered one of Ed Sheeran's songs, I think it was called Bloodstream. So that's on YouTube, you can see it. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was great. And, and even from then, like, I think I met, I saw Stormzy a few times after that as well, like on a more personal level, um, just being in different places. But yeah, so yeah, that was, that was my experience working with Stormzy on that um, BBC Live Lounge. Um, great, like great experience, great song. Um, but yeah, that was like when I was working with Quabs. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I saw a video of you um, uh, with Quabs at a, a venue uh, that you was playing, and uh, you can tell that, that the passion and stuff that you're, that, that the way that you're delivering and stuff for some of these uh, that are going with when he's kind of like freestyling and rapping. That, that I watched the Biggie Smalls documentary um, recently, and he was saying that when he when he was growing up, he was um, he had a lot of musicians around him and stuff like that, a lot of uh, drummers and stuff. So he took that mentality to that drumming mentality then into his uh, approach to rapping. Um, would you say that when you're playing like that, you can feed off each other as well? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, when you're working with rappers, you definitely can. Like um, an, an artist that I, I worked with for so long that I did, I really sh should have mentioned at the start as well is Getz. Um, yeah. Getz, working with Getz from 2011, um, you know, like, so he was really, to be honest, he was really the major gig that really put me on. Actually, I'll have to say it's Getz. Um, I had like huge, you know, huge experiences with um, some great experiences with Getz. That was like my oh, yes. first Actually, do you know, I was correct myself there. I think it was the Getz one that I was watching. I think it was that one that I was watching and what I was just talking about with the, the rapping and the freestyling as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it was Getz. Um, now, <laughs> working with Getz is crazy. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Working with Getz is, was absolutely crazy. And it, it's just felt like family as well because I've known him for such a long time. No, his brother, like his younger brother's like, one of my best friends um, and the musical director for Gets as well. So um, yeah, that gig was, that's probably like 10 years, almost 10 years, um, 2011 to 2020, nine years basically. No, yeah, nine years basically. So that definitely felt like, you know, that, that went, that's beyond music. Like that's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something spiritual, man. Let's... <laughs> yeah, so, um... Yeah, I just want to ask you about like growing up. Um, so obviously now we we see in the media a lot of, um, uh, you know, like knife crime and gang cultures and stuff in London growing up. Um, what is your, so you grew up in um, London, East London and that as well. So did you ever experience that kind of thing growing up as well? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Like being, in, like growing up, and really falling in love with like grime and stuff. There was definitely a bit of a gang culture. Um, I got involved a little bit in that as well. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just it's it's just the environment that that you're that we're in, um, that we grew up in. Um, it's just kind of there's I don't know there's there is I don't know if there's anyone to blame. I think it's just a systematic kind of issue because I saw a lot of that. I saw experience like you know people getting stabbed um like people that I knew um almost being like a victim myself just being at the wrong place at the wrong time and at the time you don't think you're at the wrong place you're just doing you you just know what you know you yeah. see what I'm saying um so yeah it was definitely there was definitely a lot of that I'm happy that I managed to get out of it um through this passion that I have for like music and drums and stuff like that so yeah, I, I definitely came across that. Yeah, and uh, I think that's why it's so important for, for people to get that kind of uh, passion. The same with me, like I grew up in a, a council estate in South East London, um, seen things, been in certain things that have been in at the wrong time. And, you know, like exactly yeah. what uh, is, I can feel what you're saying there as well. But one thing <laughs> I had was, uh, is, um, you know, which, and the thing is, a lot of people, they don't have that opportunity or they might not have that influence of someone around them. Like you said, your dad was a massive, seems like a, massive influence to me when I look back at your life um yeah to, to to subconsciously put in that passion 
there with, with you, you know um so i think um would you say like it's important for a person to have a person of influence around them at a young age yeah for sure um definitely a person of influence i think nowadays you can be influenced by a lot of things like people um what you see maybe on the internet youtube or what's going on like we have to remember like even though when i grew up like social media wasn't big but I still was able to like see things on like YouTube and get inspired. But yeah, having just the fact that I had something that gravitated me to a passion, um, because let's say somebody doesn't have a person of influence, if they find a burning desire for what they want to do, that will pull just that alone will lead them maybe to someone of influence. Um, yeah, and stuff like that. So I think what really saved me is just that that love or that passion, I discovered basically what I do and what I love. I think that's the key thing. If you really think about it, I think that's the most important thing because everyone has something that I think they're called to do, um, but not a lot of people tap into it. That I think is the, the saddest part. Um, yeah, yeah, and just... also as well, I've like psychology, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot recently and talking to a few people about this, but it's the the psychology psychology of of ha been having nothing like we spoke about earlier of you get so used to be in that mindset of like oh it's never going to happen to me and it's kind of like you know psychologically put into you as a, as a youngster because you know when you've got nothing uh you've got nothing to lose and you've got you, you, yeah. and it's all that that kind of mentality uh so when good stuff start to happen to you to you you're so used to you know you're psychologically trained in a way to to, yeah. not, to not have that as well you know um so that's an interesting interesting kind of um um that we all go through and stuff did you did you, we spoke a little bit about that earlier i know but did you say you felt felt that a lot when you was doing certain big gigs and playing with certain people was like oh should i be here is this my place <laughs> i've definitely yeah i've definitely felt yeah it's it's weird like for example in two, like 2019 probably was the biggest year musically of my life, like touring wise. I literally toured the world with um, Little Sims. Big shout out to Little Sims. Um, like incredible, incredible eyes. Um, but that experience led me to places and led me to places around the world that I was just like, you know, I was on to, for example, <clears throat> I went to Australia like my it's like my gift got me to australia and new zealand like i had never thought in a million years i would end up in australia or new zealand right mm. um then we toured america and stuff like that and there's moments i was in there just thinking like if the younger me could would know that this would happen it, it's crazy that's kind of really what it is it's just kind of like this juxtaposition of like what like it's 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 crazy. It's you know. So sometimes it doesn't feel real. Still, like even when things happen, because I've never forgotten where I've come from. Like never. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think never, that's never key. Forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. You seem very humble and staying like you know, um, staying real to who you are. That's uh, um, definitely key in a lot of different industries that that you see as well. You know. Um, just going back to the uh, some of the gigs you played. So obviously the. Mm -hmm. um, Another two that really stand out on the list was um, main stage at Wireless and uh, the Brit, Brit Awards as well, right? So can you talk a little bit about that that experience? Yeah, so I did the Brit Awards. The Brit Awards was um, with Rihanna. Um, that's when I did the Brit Awards. I did Wireless with Conor Maynard. Did Glastonbury twice with, um, once with Quabs and a second time with um, Little Sims. And that Glastonbury, like that experience is just <laughs> it's, a lot of people, man. It's nuts. It's 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 like Glastonbury, um, both times. I think like I did it with Little Sims, well both like both times, but it's I think the full show is still up on BBC iPlayer somewhere. Um like I remember doing that and just watching the replay back, black back, and just like you know, I had like a, a section where I had a drum solo as well, and it's just 
it's just crazy. It's, 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 yeah, it's crazy. Like when I did wireless, main stage wireless, that was like my first big thing. We were supporting, I think the last, the last act on stage was um, Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z, right? So we basically opened up for them. And that, that, that wireless, Conor Maynard wireless, there was a replay that was on MTV. So like, that was on MTV for like three years. Like literally just, yeah. you could go and watch it. It was nuts. So those experiences were like, crazy like playing to like 50 60 thousand people um yeah man some some <laughs> some crazy. Dope, crazy stuff yeah, yeah no it's uh inspiring stuff as well you know like the the, the we was talking about the the kind of uh the background of them the, the self-discipline and uh so a lot of people kind of listening to this um are aspiring to 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 play those gigs and, and stuff as well you know and you've been yeah uh, you've been fortunate to play all those um those gigs and so what would your advice be for you know young drummers that m might watch this um and think oh, i want i want to do that as well and what we were just talking about earlier where they can't find that email address man they can't find that <laughs> so. do, do you know do you know what I'll, I'll say this like for anyone coming up musician um because for example right now i've kind of moved over to like production and stuff like that which we'll get into maybe later but my advice would be just really believe that it's possible really believe in yourself like really really believe in yourself that's that's the first major thing um without that nothing you try will work there's no special this or that. just believe in yourself first and then nowadays things are different there's social media there's instagram like it's easier to get yourself out there but I tell you what really gets you these things is just you as a person, just your character. First of all, believing yourself, being a good person, like perseverance. And then one way or the other, it's going to work out. As long as you also know what you want to do and like you, you keep imagining it and dreaming about it, it will happen. So again, that, that's, I think that's the best advice I can give. Like believing yourself, knowing what you want, and just being a great person. Everything else is going to take care of itself from there. Oh, and obviously practice, like practice a lot. <laughs> be good. <Yeah. laughs> be great at what you do. Be good at what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Be, like, be great at what you do. I think when you love for it, um, you it will tend you to practice. But definitely be be like as the best as you can. Like, yeah, sure. some great yeah. advice there, man. Excellent. And uh, what what uh, I ask as well, a lot of my guests recently, is that we're going through kind of like, you know, technical, technological kind of revolution in a way aren't we? like you just you just touched on there about um it you, you didn't really have social media growing up and, and the same with me like you know in my space generation i am yeah, just my start, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it just started started it all but um so what's your take on uh obviously we know that it's got negatives and positives but what's your take on 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 social media in in general i think social media is great to be seen it's like it's an even playing field now. Um, like everyone, if you persist, you keep posting and you create content for yourself, you just, it will just push yourself out there. So I'm, I'm totally for it. I, I, I feel like, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a good, it's good to get yourself out there. I feel like, again, I'm still a big believer that like, see, I'm out of weird space now. Like, cause I've not really been posting as much as I was before. So I don't really use social media to get myself a gig or whatever. I just use it to spread a message or to, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so up and coming, if it's, this is why you have to know what you want to do. Um, because don't get me wrong. You can also be a social media musician and not have like real life experiences. And it, it that's the thing with social media now where it makes you feel like it's real life, but maybe it's not. Um, but in terms of building a brand, man, like social media, like is, is where it's at. Like you can build your brand, you can get yourself a target audience. You can collaborate with different people. Um, so yeah, like social media has changed the game for, for real yeah yeah definitely like you said and it's uh it's got that positive kind of a lot of people do focus on the negative of the you know like uh where a lot of youngsters are putting stuff on there where 
they everybody wants to be famous these days in terms of right. it, it's possible and stuff and there's there's so many different walks of life where you can earn a lot of money through through the through the internet and stuff like that you know um but also that i think that might there's another side that that can be unhealthy do you think there's yes. another side that could be unhealthy yeah. with if wanting yeah. fame without the like you said the discipline and the talent as well yeah yeah no 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 for sure okay yes Let, let's talk about that yes um so social media is it's, it's also not real life at the same time. And the thing about social media, the unhealthy part is um, it could make you, 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 you're seeing so many people's highlights of their, of their best roles and you, you want to be that. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you, and you can compare yourself when you don't really know what's going on. So it could give people maybe a false sense of entitlement or sometimes just be unhealthy where it makes people feel bad because they've seen other people doing these great things or it seems to be that and it's not really happening. So a lot of people can pretend on social media. Um, like I know people that may have like, you know, crazy amounts of followers, um, but maybe haven't really had real life experience. Yeah. Um, uh, thousands of thousands of followers isn't going on tour it's not the same it's like yeah yeah <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> it's not like being in rooms with real people that make things happen it's not it's just <laughs> you see what i'm yeah. saying so social media can like i i took like a almost a two-month break actually from social media um i literally just came back on social media like a couple of weeks ago um, so yes, it, it, it can be unhealthy if you're doing too much on it. And that's the thing. So double-edged sword with technology. Um, it's really good at the same time. It could be really unhealthy. So I really promote like having time to yourself, like, you know, really plugging in with yourself first, reading a lot of books, meditating, like just really knowing who you are as a person. Because in social media, you can get lost. And for me, music and this this gift that we've been given is is a, is an art form from God, from the higher self. So protect it, use it well. Don't sell it out for fame or things like that. You know, it's just be true to yourself. So yeah, social media can have a bad effect in that sense that um, people can kind of like lose themselves in it. And yeah. I feel like yeah. we've all fallen into that trap. I feel like even me, I feel like so at one point I started uh, trying to portray. Mm -hmm. myself that I'm not and I had to catch myself I had to be honest with myself and I had to be like nah like stop trying to be something that you're not so yeah oh, definitely yeah I think that's a great message and I think a lot of people are really searching out for kind of real real people now as well real, realisms and stuff like that and like you just said about you just touched on a uh, faith then so is faith a, a big a big you know important thing that's been in your journey as well Without yeah, sounding 100. like the X Factor there with your journey. <laughs> no, 100, no, 100%. 100%. That's been... Like, some of the things that have happened in my life, I just can't explain to you. Like, how I got the Rihanna, how I got this, how I got that, how I came about this gig, how I got, you know... Like, I did a commercial. I did a, a TV commercial for Poker Stars. Like, I'm I'm drumming on a flipping worldwide... Oh, yeah, cool. I saw TV. that, man. It's great, yeah. Yeah, on a TV advert. And I've, I was really, as a kid, like watching TV and, and I was always thinking, how do people get on these adverts? Like, how does that? And it's just like, I can't even explain how that came about. Things come about in weird ways. And I always just, I feel like, even if you don't believe in something, like believe in gratitude, giving thanks for what you have. And I feel like spirituality really starts with just giving thanks. Because once you give thanks for where you are and what's around you and you believe that the world is good that the world gives you that back so that is the god power in itself you see what yeah. i'm saying yeah definitely there's yeah. a lot of way we, we can break down like that the word faith as well can't you because like yeah. you, you know like for me i've always had belief and faith in what i've 
in what I do with the you know the, the music, music talent like that from a, mm-hmm. from a young age and stuff like that. So I've had f- I try to keep even in bad times trying to keep faith in that what I do best and and really narrow yeah. it down to to that. You have faith in what you in yourself really it comes mm-hmm. back to it. like you're just saying with the self the self love and and the, and you know the the kind of time for yourself and stuff you know yeah and really really getting to know who you are um yeah. as a person um and kind of like rooting that in within you and then going forward you know so yeah i think it's important um, yeah as well you know um and so we just also spoke about that you just touched on it that you also do producing right as well so um so you play a few different instruments as well so and you said that you you, you took a break to do that kind of side of things now as well is that right am i right yeah so it's yeah so like my dad's a producer um i've always had a passion for creating music not just playing drums i've also had a passion for being more like i don't even see myself as just a musician i'm like everything i want to act as well i want to do all these things and i'm now unlocking all these parts of me right yeah um but production wise yes i love making creating music um i've seen i've grown up to it it's something that i knew i was going to end up doing and i think 2019 um well in 2014 i created a, a group a production group a team called legend city right so shout out to legend city um you know and then we did our first we produced an ep for an amazing talent called face he's a rapper and you know, our executive produced that record. It's on iTunes right now. It's called Rose Gold. Um, so, yeah, I got into that. And that was like, we worked on that 2018, 19. Um, I had my own studio in 2017. So in 2017, the live, I wasn't really touring as much. So throughout the whole 2017 to 2018, um, I started engineering and I started like recording. Right, I literally jumped in the deep end. I was like, yeah. I'm going to find a spot, put equipment in and have my own studio. <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just put myself in the deep end and started learning like, to practice. Started, then I, 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 um, I worked as an engineer for, a lot of people don't know this, for these producers called the Beat Freaks, right? There's like huge producers in the UK, um, you know, they've got a lot of things happening. So I started engineering for them, right? So I was gaining little experiences, little things like bit by bit that just led me, that I just lead into kind of what I'm doing now, um, which is now going to like my own stuff. So I feel like this next decade is going to be me and my projects. That's um, fantastic. Kind of if people want to listen to that, can you just say that one more time? People want to, to so listen the, to Yeah, that. Rose Gold EP um phase f x z e so yeah so the f instead of f a z e is f x z e rose gold so that is so that's a rapper rapper called phase but my production team produced that, that whole um ep uh yeah that's that's great excellent i'll check it out as well and uh, yeah, yeah it sounds like you're doing great stuff in in that area um one thing that kind of keeps coming back to me uh, since we've been talking is that every move that you you've made where it's gone to the next level there seems to be a massive sense of community um so what i mean by that is like you started these drum uh, shed things where you're you, you've got you're bringing in drummers and then and then you're bringing in other people's sense of community and then through mm. that you'll meet a, a drummer that might then do who knows storms who knows someone else who knows this and he's and the same thing you're you seem to be taking the same approach now and you're producing right you're working with other people that uh you're not just doing it on your own as well and uh yeah. i know i've been guilty of that myself is trying to do everything on, on my on myself you know like just uh i yeah. don't know if it's uh i mean we can talk about ego as well that's a whole whole other hour there but um yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so would you say that a sense of community and uh that community has helped your progression yeah no for sure like I've got, I've got a good friend of mine, um, Luda producer, um, Le- Leando. So I met him, I was like 13, 14 when I met him, right? And he was, produ- he was, you know, he always loved production. And then I went off, did my tours and stuff like that, came back. 
And I was just like, let's do something together. I want you to be part of my team. I want to, I love, I love the aspect of making it with my friends because I yeah. went out on my own. I feel like I went, I did this tour on my own and I loved it. It was great. But, and then I used to come home and I used to miss my friends. I used to miss my mates that I grew up playing football with or that I knew. And I said, I, I made a vow that I'm going to make it with my people, with, you know, I want to, to make it, to be at Grammy Awards, Legend City with my friends. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I've always had a collaborative mind, like not just yeah. with my friends, like my friends, I really want to make it with them, but with anyone. So I don't just, I'm not this guy of, uh, it's me, me, me. No, I want to collaborate. Like collaboration is the best thing because not only we, we get our ideas together, we also get to know each other. And I feel like in life, what's missing is human interaction. Yeah. Like with everything that's going on in the world right now, I feel like a lot of these things make humans like go apart, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, with obviously what's going on with the yeah, Corona with COVID the corona, and but... stuff, which is, you know, sad and stuff, but it's like, you go out on the street and it's like, Oh, I can't speak to, they might, yeah, can't yeah. Speak to, you know, and that's taken away from just like, I think humanity is made for serving one another. I'm a big believer of that. I feel like you're only going to go as far in life as how many people, you give to and you serve and how can you serve and give to people if you have a bad vision of someone right you yeah. see what i'm saying so i know i've gone deep there but bringing that back to music it's like let's collaborate you know all the greatest songs and not even the greatest songs the greatest movies the greatest things that have come out ever research them have all come with collaborated stuff like we're here together through collaboration kind of thing like yeah like so know, what we're, we're doing now yeah yeah definitely and uh i had that switch moment as well where kind of you know i've always played in bands and stuff growing up i was in a band with my brother played we was, we was like you know all cousins when we first started so it's like when you're younger you have a oh we're gonna make it we're gonna make it all family band and stuff together but people do different things as you grow up and they start getting in yeah. different areas as well so sometimes yeah. it's not possible to collaborate with it sometimes you've been forced to have to do stuff on your own yeah just pointed that out because just because i noticed the theme going through uh what you're doing <laughs> with uh you know different collaborations that you've done even when i watched the video where um I believe that it's a, a session band playing. I can't remember who it was, but it, you, you're, it, you as a session band all playing together on stage. I think it might have been part of the YouTube documentary. And yeah. you're, you're, you're all playing. So you've got the keyboard player, drummer, bass player, and you're, yeah. and you're all playing. Is, was, that, was that like kind of a session band, all session guys together as well, was that? I think that might have been the Getz band. I think there's Getz a band, scene yeah. in there where we heard all together as well. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's when we were we did like a UK tour of Getz, like we did Manchester, Birmingham and stuff like that. And like with all the people that I've worked in, we've always had that great sense of family, you know, kind of thing. Like even when I was working with Little Sims, same thing. Like it was like more than just a it was like family. It's like, you know, and now that mentality has stuck with me. You know, I love that sense of coming together. I think being a, so being isolated is good for self-development, practice and stuff like that. But when you want to make it globally, even if you're building your own brand, you, I feel that's important to bring other people in with you as well. Like, you know, or appreciate the people editing your videos or your assistant or I don't know, whoever. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's true, man, definitely. Yeah. So what's the uh, the future looking like for you? So um, are you planning on doing more uh, festivals in the summer or are you, like, with, are you working with any artists or are you going to now be concentrating more on the production side of things? Yes, yeah, so this is this is what I've come to. It's I feel like it's led me back. I feel like, do you know what's funny? I feel like I'm back at square one in a weird way. Like... Yeah. It's, it's mad even me saying it on here because I'm like saying my personal thoughts by bringing it out here. So we're in 2021 and two, 10 years ago, 2011, you know, I had done Rihanna, but nothing had kicked off yet. So I feel like I've done all these things this past decade and I'm back to where I was 10 years ago, but just older, you know, with a more life experience. Yeah. And now it's like, I'm just seeing it as a decade, 2021 to the end of the decade is probably going to be the journey as me 
the artist, the, the person, yeah. my journey. Whereas before I spent getting that experience working for other people, which was great. But now it's like the future is definitely my projects now and really what I want to do and build that legacy for me. So I think that's where it's going. Cool. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing some of those uh, uh, productions and, and, and wish you all the best. And I believe that you've just um, recently just have, had a baby, right? If you don't mind me saying yes. it. Yes. Five yes, months. Yes, uh, yes. Congratulations as well. Congratulations. Thank you. It must have changed. Thank it must have changed a bit of a game changer, right? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's crazy <laughs> being a father now because um, it's weird. I still feel like a kid in a way, even though I'm like, <laughs> no, the feeling. Like, I'm like, I'm like almost 30. <laughs> two, like two years away from 30 or one year and a half, whatever. But yeah, life has really changed, man. But I'm grateful. Like, I'm grateful. Like, it's just added more motivation and yeah, I'm just much more happier as a person. And uh, yeah, man. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, final question. Uh, so what's one thing that keeps you doing what you do? What's one thing that keeps me doing? I think it's, wow, it's, 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 that's a good question. What keeps me doing what I do? I think I just want to, I don't want to miss out anything. I'm always thinking, what if, like, imagine if this could happen. Like, I just dream big. I, sometimes I get lost in my imagination. Like, I just see as we're, we're passing through in this world and why not make the most out of it? Why not take that chance to yourself and be like, if, what what happened if I became this? Or if I went for this? Like, I see the earth, I see like this life as just like, we're moving in. So just make the most of it. So I think that's what keeps me going. Just the fact that anything is possible. Yeah. Um, and the fact that I've experienced impossible things, it just lets me know that, okay. Like I've been in rooms with like celebrities or people that I used to see on TV and I'm just like, wait, now I'm here. So it's just like, okay, let's just take it up another level then. So I think that's what keeps me going. Just the, the, the fact that there's endless possibilities kind of thing. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Like a movie, right? You'd never know what's going to yeah. happen next. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, man. Excellent. That was a uh, fantastic. Thank you for um, your time today, uh, Stephen. Absolutely. And then um, it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Really interesting um, insight. And I'm, um, yeah, like I said, this podcast is all about keeping it real and kind of, you know, uh, talking about your journey and keep, and uh, hopefully to people watch this and be inspired by uh, what you've done as well, you know. Um, so is there, just before we go, um, where can people find out if they want to find out more information on you, what you've got coming up, social media and all that, all that jazz? Yeah, just um, follow me on, um, I guess, on Instagram, at Stephen underscore g legend um i'm also going to start um posting more on youtube now i'm gonna come back to youtube uh, so yes yeah, Stephen g legend um twitter the same thing um at Stephen underscore g legend um which i'll obviously pass on the information to you and stuff but yeah like i'll 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 be i'll be very active so people can find me on that um and yeah that's, That's it, really. great. Excellent. Yeah. And I, uh, I recommend that uh, documentary on Stephen's, uh, Stephen G. Legend's YouTube channel as well. So go and watch that. It's, uh, it's, it's a really good watch as well. And you've got loads more content coming up on that as well. So yeah. like I said, pleasure, mate, to have you on today. And I uh, wish you all the best for the future. And hopefully, so hopefully I'll come and see you play. And, uh, and definitely uh, don't be a stranger. Let's do it. <laughs> be a stranger. Let's, let's work well, together mate. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a few Bacardis. <laughs> 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 nice Definitely. one dude have a great day mate you too and thank Take you it. very much that was uh Stephen. thank you